my part of the business is the tour, the tour side, and looking after guys that um, obviously Alex is one of them, and some of the other names you'll you'll, you'll see up here. And basically, having this vehicle gives us the ability to run our business on a tour side. You know, pretty much in the field, anywhere on the planet, this thing we can get it to. You know, take it across to basically all all the Europe, all the European tour events we can get to uh, in the time that's available to get it there. The trucks set up in kind of three stations this side of it. it is pretty clear that it's a workshop so in here is everything we need to do to kind of adjust, amend, take measurements um, and build golf clubs from from scratch. Um, the events I go to I do some of the South African events and then I do the kind of Middle East swing, Dubai swing and start of the year and then outside of that I'm just too busy with this, managing this, getting it from A to B and then just all the other logistics. And the strangest request I had was uh, I think it was at Carnoustie uh, the, the Open and um, Nick Faldo split his thumbnail so I super glued it back on. <laughs> and someone asked me that question before, and I must admit, that's probably the most nervous I've been. So I thought, well, what, what do I do if, it split, if I glue all these fingers together? It's going to be a nightmare. But because it's just a quick reference, because in here, when it's when we're kind of in full flow on, say, like a Tuesday, the traffic that comes through here with the amount of clubs we've got going on with putters, building stuff, it can be a bit organised chaos, almost like a chef's kitchen. I wouldn't say we're shouting at each other, but sometimes it does. The orders just get shouted down the room so the less you can kind of have in your head at times when you're thinking it's uh you know it just makes life a little bit easier and then we have guys that don't necessarily have the same grip on every club they might have certain different amounts of tapes on different clubs and then some of them have like Christopher Broberg on his wedges he has 60 ribs but yet on his woods hybrids and irons he has 60 rounds reversed so the last thing you'd want to do under pressure or not thinking is put a rib upside down because that would make the golf club non-conforming so that would be pretty catastrophic so you wouldn't want that to happen. The irons, the iron heads are, um, if they're this, yeah this set would be exactly the same as you could buy the head wise. The only thing we do is at the start of the year is I forecast what we're going to use and how much of it we're going to use and who would use it. And so some guys we have over length, so I would just order, say, 15 sets of that model, eight grams lighter than that head, so I could still be able to set an inch over at D3. So wedge heads, we, we, I order heavier wedge heads, so if we're going to grind a, grind a wedge, you know, you're not grinding it down to sort of C3 or whatever really light. And then the shafts, you know, the shaft manufacturers are of a higher grade than you would potentially buy, because they're all the, the tolerances are slightly tighter or they would just go through their production plant and just weigh them all and sort all the 70 grams together because they'll, they'll have plus or minus tolerances and they'll just hand sort them through that so it's just kind of taking everything trying to take as much of the uh, tolerance out of everything you can